Hello, everyone. My name is Varm Sukius. I'm the VP of Application Infrastructure and Operations, thank you, over at Warner Brothers. Um, quick show of hands. How many of you are considering migrating your public DNS to RAW 53? OK, so I have some particularly useful information for you, which I hope will save you some time. If you're not considering it, I hope I still have some good info for you. Uh, should be able to wrap up ahead of schedule, so if you have questions at the end, feel free to line up at the microphone. Happy to take them. So before I get into our migration tale, our story of how we moved all of our public DNS traffic to RAW 53, I'd like to set some context first. So I'll talk a little bit about Warner Brothers, who we are, valuable context, uh, how we use AWS and how we've used it over the years, uh, what our DNS setup looked like prior to moving to RAW 53, uh, the road we took to RAW 53, no pun intended, our results, and what's next for us. So who are, who are we? We are a global leader in the creation, production, distribution, licensing, and marketing of all forms of entertainment. Now, most of you, I'm sure, know us for movies and TV shows. We also have big gaming divisions. So for you gamers, I'm sure you've played several of our titles before. Uh, but that's who we are. Now, I put the word global in bold and italics for a very important reason. I'll cover that in a second. But with all of these divisions that, that produce all this content and entertainment comes a lot of applications and a lot of domain names to the tune of over 25,000, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. So how have we used AWS in the past? We actually have a long history with AWS. We have some divisions that have been using AWS for many years, uh, most notably brands such as TMZ and, and their main website, TMZ.com, uh, Drama Fever, uh, one of our gaming studios, Turbine, uh, and others. Uh, but there are some units, some groups such as ours that are in the process as we speak of migrating our applications to the public cloud, namely AWS. Uh, so the primary drivers, and this is speaking across my interactions with different people at the studio, the primary reasons for moving to the cloud uh, is the four that, that are in the middle of the screen there. So application isolation and billing clarity go hand in hand. A very common pattern across WB is, is a group stands up a data center, they start pouring a few hundred applications into the data center. They're all you know, sitting on maybe, I don't know how many VLANs, maybe one, maybe 10. Uh, but ultimately, over time, what happens is you lose the true cost of ownership of an, app of an application. So we take what I'll call, you know, quote unquote, micro data center strategy. We stand up these little virtual micro data centers in the cloud. We have over 150 uh, as we speak. Uh, and those accounts loose, uh, map, map loosely to an application. Sometimes it's you know, an environment of an application. Sometimes it's a group of similar applications. But point being, we're now further isolated, which gives you a security benefit. If something happens to one application, the odds of it impacting another one in another account, that's now gone, right? So security comes hand in hand, not to mention the, the automation and security features that come to AWS. But that's not what this talk is about. Agility is the other one. I'm sure you all love spinning up VMs and having it come up in two minutes. That's also a, a big factor for us. We enjoy that as well. So what did our setup look like before moving to RAW 53? Um, it was an on-premise solution. Well, on-premise is a little bit of an incorrect term there. We had two VMs running in AWS, one in East, one in West, one VM running in a data center, and those were three name servers running by nine, no self-service. So my group manages most of the domains across the studio, like I said, over 25,000 of them. That means that if someone wanted to do some kind of maintenance at 2 a.m. on a Saturday, it's a ticket that comes into my group, someone has to wake up at 2 a.m., take care of them, resolve the ticket, off we go. Not the most friction-free way of doing things. So self-service is an important consideration for us. With these three VMs also comes poor fault tolerance. Our three VMs are far less than the points of presence that, that are available in RAW 53. Uh, and we all saw what happened a month ago with, with that big DNS outage, right? So if that could get overpowered, imagine what you could do to three VMs. Poor geographic distribution. Like I said, one in the East Coast, two in the West Coast. That means that international lookups suffer. We are a global company, as I said earlier. So why should the experience from Europe or Asia or anywhere else suffer because we're not properly geographically distributed. It's a very often overlooked component of application performance. If you could get DNS performance increased, your application will respond quicker. It's just easy win. 
25,000 plus domains, that, that, that was the scope of what we had to migrate. Some zones were quite big. WarnerBros.com has over 10,000 records within that zone file. But ultimately, the takeaway for any of you that are running an on-premise DNS solution, whether it's Bind or TinyDNS or whatever you have out there, Microsoft DNS, uh, ultimately, the, the, the one takeaway, and I'm a big believer in this, is, is if you operate DNS without an API in front of it, it's pure misery. And that's one of the things that we, of course, got as part of our migration to Route 53. So prior to doing the move, we had a few things to consider. One was the domain registration process. When you have 25,000 domains, you're going to be registering domains pretty frequently. And that process had to continue running smoothly. We also had to devise a scheme for reusable and hopefully WV branded delegation sets. Then we had to find a way to import and validate thousands of zones. And mind you, we did a lot of this work behind the scenes. We did notify some groups, of course, but at least to the average WB employee, this was happening very much behind the scenes. If we missed one record during the import process and an application went down because of it, that's a big problem. So we were shooting for 100% accuracy. Anything less than that is a failure. Then we also have to verify that, that IAM and zone delegation works exactly as advertised, because what would be the point of moving to Route 53 and then not be able to give someone self-service to manage their own zone? Kind of defeat the purpose, so we had to check that box. And then we had to worry about raising several Route 53 default limits. So this is a screenshot taken maybe a month or two ago, I don't know if anything has changed, but of the default limits that you get with Route 53. So we spun up an AWS account, that's where all of our zones are going to go into. And then we proceeded to raise limits. So 500 zones per account, that's obviously way too low for us. We got that raised. Reusable delegation sets. I'll talk about the importance of, of why that is in a second, but we bumped that limit to 2,000, which I believe is the highest it goes. Uh, that's for hosted zones per delegation set, yep. And then we had to bump the resource record set limit. Like I said, we had some zones that had 15,000 records within them. So we're now done. Our limit for delegation sets is 2,000. That means we can migrate zones in chunks of 2,000 domains. So imagine having to work with your registrar and telling them we want to cut over this many domains, right? The bigger that list is, the easier it is for us. And our goal was to finish this project in roughly six weeks. Pretty short time frame, considering that volume of domains. So the bigger that limit was, the more chunks, the more domains we could fit in the chunk, Less work we have to do with the registrar, speeds things up. So in order to fit in that six-week time frame, we were talking two to three batches of 2,000 domains per week. Very next up, we had to write a tool to validate those zones as we transfer, the, as we transfer them to Route 53 to ensure for that 100% accuracy, so we did that. And then we wrote a tool to easily set up new domains. So if you're the person in charge of acquiring domains for WB and you have to guess which delegation set isn't exceeded, kind of hard, right? So we abstracted that logic. Now they could go in, register the domain. It automatically creates the zone file within Route 53, and it assigns it to a delegation set that's available. Then we had to lower TTLs. So this is a fail-safe. We lowered it on the bind side, then imported it into Route 53. If something were to go wrong for whatever reason, the time to cut back would be shorter while we figured out what, what happened. Luckily, we didn't need to do this. So then we picked up the phone and, and gave Sean and his team a call, uh, and we talked about what the right way was to do this. And they recommended an open source tool called CLI 53. It worked for the most part. And this is what I mean by the most part. So what you're looking at here is a pull request that is now thankfully merged into the project. So this is actually a documentation fix, believe it or not. In Route 53, when you create a zone, there's a name with the zone, and then there's a zone ID. Doing lookups by zone ID is quicker. And when you're trying to import 2,000 domains at a time, it slows down drastically if you try to do things by, by name. If you have to delete the zone, it slows it down. So we couldn't even tactically accomplish that, those chunks of 2,000 by passing in names to CLI 53. Now, it turns out that this wasn't a big deal because the code had the concept of zone IDs, but the documentation didn't state so. So the pull request literally changes the argument flag to say, hey, you could pass a name or you could pass an ID. Great, now we're good. The second issue we found. For the most part, 
zone IDs are 12 characters. So we got through, I don't know how many thousands of zones that we imported successfully, and then boom, hit a bug. It would not import. Why? The zone ID was 11 characters. <laughs> I believe it could also be shorter than that. So technically this isn't 100% accurate, but this enabled us to complete the project. We didn't hit that bug again. <laughs> so simple fix to a regular expression to shorten the character length enforcement of a zone ID. So hopefully that doesn't happen to anyone else here. <laughs> hopefully we paved the road for you guys, but that's what those two fixes were. So what were our results? 25,000 zones, got it done in under six weeks. Pretty impressive. The big takeaway was that upfront investment in automation made all the difference in the world. Uh, to my knowledge, no one picked up the phone and said my application is down because some record didn't come in. So as far as I'm concerned, it was a slam dunk, 100% error free. And now, of course, we have the benefit of, of allowing people to self-service on their zones. Big win, everyone's happy and excited. Of course, we also gain the soft benefit of, of that greatly reduced risk of a DDoS attack taking down DNS. Like I said earlier, I'm sure Amazon's network is, is considerably more capable of taking that on than our three VMs were. And last but not least, increased performance that I alluded to earlier. So this is a map of what it looked like before. This is using a, a synthetic monitoring tool that my group uses called Catchpoint. It's a geographic map of DNS latency around the globe. So what this is literally doing is doing, like in Sean's example earlier, a dig against what was ns.warnerbros.com, I believe, uh, and then recording the latency. So green is close to zero, makes sense, right? West Coast has, has, some, uh, has some good numbers. East Coast, uh, a little bit better, uh, a little bit worse, sorry. Uh, going out to Europe and Asia, awful. At the end of the day, it's speed of light. You're not gonna solve that by, by simply being in the East Coast. And this is afterwards. You can see our European customers are now a lot happier, <laughs> a lot more green there. Uh, some red in China, India. So I was actually talking to Sean about this earlier. Uh, this is going against one of the name servers that is, that is associated with a domain. Behind the scenes, that gets sharded out to multiple locations. So if the test were to occur across all four name servers, that would get flattened out. Unfortunately, could, couldn't do that in the tool. But overall, lesson learned, moral of the story, performance got significantly better around the globe. And here's a screenshot of what it looks like. These are our branded delegation sets. So this is a DNS lookup uh, against, for NS records against warnerbros.com. And you can see it's branded with a WB name. Uh, NS1 through four is just standard convention. And then the part after the hyphen, that's how we cycle through delegation sets. So A to Z, one to nine, and that gives us plenty of headroom. You know, at 2,000 per, per delegation set, and we could fit an eternity worth of domains, I'm sure. So what are our next steps? While we have self-service at the zone level, what we don't have today is self-service at the individual resource record level. WarnerBros.com, as I said earlier, 15,000 individual resource records underneath it. Different groups control those individual resource records or should have ownership over those resource records. We don't have that fine-grained level of, of allocation to, to those groups. So something we're looking forward to solving in 2017. Hopefully they beat us to the punch. We'll find out. <laughs> have a little race. Uh, and then, of course, we also want to start leveraging the advanced traffic policies and health checks that Sean spoke of earlier. Uh, lots of benefits to doing that, that that we simply didn't have in the bind world. And last but not least, we're certainly not a two-year-old startup. It's amazing how much cruft builds up in DNS over time. And i never seen that before, uh, not having worked at a company that's been around for as long as Warner Bros. before in my past, but uh, lots of cleanup to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, groups oftentimes will retire an application. Uh, they'll forget about retiring DNS. It stays in DNS forever. What that means downstream is paying more for zones that are no longer needed, uh, slower API responses because your zone has 15,000 <laughs> records underneath it, whereas if it had you know, five or 10, things are faster. So it's, it's a good hygiene measure that we'll be taking uh, in 2017 as well. And with that, thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to step up to the mic. Yep, yep, yep.